Good afternoon, it's 2.30. Welcome to the workshop meeting scheduled for Tuesday, May 17th at 2.30. Call the roll, please. Mr. Franco. Yes. Ms. Cassell. Yes. Mr. Boston. Here. We have a latecomer. <laughs> I'm a coming. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. And while we're at it, Mayor Petrolia is on the phone. Could someone give us a motion to allow her to uh, join us telephonically, please? Um, so moved. Second. Please call the roll. Mayor Petrolia. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Mr. Frankel. Yes. Mr. Boston. Yes. Ms. Cassell. Yes. Okay, item one is a request by Bonnie Miskell for city commission sponsorship of a privately initiated text amendment to the land development regulations to permit a retail eyeglass store to include ancillary optoma optometry services. Just a reminder, pursuant to our local rules, um, Ms. Miskell will give a presentation and she just needs one commissioner to sponsor. And then at that point, she will be able to move her application forward if she receives a sponsor. Good afternoon, Ms. Miskell. Did you sleep here last night? <laughs> do, do we? I did get a few hours in between. Okay, good. Does, does someone have to sponsor? Um, she's going to make the presentation and then. Yes, okay. and then we, then we sponsor. Okay. We do have um, a presentation, a very brief presentation if you'd like to see it. I'll leave it up to the board. That's up to you. Okay. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Um, thank you very much. My name is Bonnie Miskell. I'm here on behalf of um, the view, which used to be the Sea View Optical uh, previously, which has been in the city for years. And we'll get right to the crux of this. So Sea View Optical um, has been operating in the city for many years, and they recently relocated to 302 East Atlantic Avenue, which you will know as the former SunTrust, a portion of that space, um, fronting on Atlantic just east of Southeast 3rd. Um, it's in the Central Core Subdistrict, CBD, and they have rebranded as View Optical. They're a luxury optical boutique, and we're, I'll show you a picture so you can get a sense of what they're doing. Um, the, CB, the Central Core CBD has a retail frontage requirement in which the ground floor spaces must be a retail. Um, View Optical is a, an eyeglass store, both um, prescription and sunglass, and they like many of the others, have um, the, it, it is a retail store where there's, that's their product, they're selling glasses, but they do have in the back of their store an optometry exam service for the benefit of the customers. If they want to check the quality of their eyesight, they can, they get a prescription, and then they can use that prescription to buy the glasses. So essentially, this is, this is the area, the hatched area is the frontage requirement area, Okay, and that's what their store looks like. So as you can see, you walk in the front um, and you are in the midst of eyeglass displays. And the, this is the area where you can sit down and look at books as well if your product isn't shown on the walls. This is looking towards the street. And that's pretty much it. We, we did go to the DDA to talk about it. Um, I'm, I'm going to kind of skip over this, but examples of stores that do what we're proposing to do, Warby Parker, for those of you that have been down to Los Olas, Lens Crafters, Cohen, they're located mostly, is that me, are located mostly in malls. Um, so we're simply following what every, everyone else in the industry is, is following. Um, this is the section of code that speaks to the retail frontage. I won't go into detail. If you have questions, we can talk about it. And then another section of the code says 100% of the building frontage at the sidewalk level um, story shall be used only for the following uses, and it speaks to general retail. The exam component is treated as if it's medical office or optometry offices, or an optomet, uh, optomolo, whatever they are, <laughs> office, sorry. <laughs> it's been a, sh yeah, I've only had about five hours sleep. In any event, um, because of that, we have a problem with the code. Um, and so we're proposing to modify 
the frontage requirement, and I'm going to get right to the point. To amend the code to add eyeglass stores a retail use expressly with restrictions regarding size, location of the accessory optometry space, and a requirement that the optometry service be ancillary, ancillary and serving the store itself. And so we have a DDA letter of support. We extracted parts of it. They recommended that that exam space be limited to, to the back of the store and no more than 20% of the space, which is more than acceptable. The space is actually a little smaller than that. Um, and so we've modified our proposed language to incorporate what the DDA recommended to allow the eyeglass store retail sales. And so that's really it. Um, I'll open it up for questions if you should have any. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? No. Can someone just real quickly tell me what was the thinking behind not allowing this type of a, a store? So the retail frontage requirement was really intended to have an active and vibrant frontage on Atlantic. Um, and there was a concern that offices close generally 5, 6 p.m. at night, and they don't want dark space on the pedestrian ground level. It's perfectly acceptable up above. Um, so that is where that came from. This, and, and by the way, one last thing. If I wanted to go to an optometrist to, to just make an appointment and go in for the appointment and tell, you know, find out how my eyes are doing, that's not what they are providing here. It is entirely serving the retail for customers. You could not book an appointment and go in there without buying their products. So, and as someone okay, who you. bought their glasses from the former CV Optical, same here. Hopefully, it was job. a good experience. <laughs> Didn't they used to do this? At the other location, oh, Anthea is giving me the finger. Oh, no. Did I say something? <laughs> oh, you did. I, I was like, I just wanted to add something as to sure. why this is needed. Um, so, yes. So, uh, up until, um, I want to say a couple of years ago, um, we basically arranged the required retail uses where the use was required to be along the front, and then, you know, other uses could be in the back like this. Um, then, then there was one of the top ten requests ironically by the DDA at the time, which made sense to all of us at the time for the record, was that we had tenants that were starting to mix in those office uses and like crawling forward and now we sell luggage but we're really a wealth management company. So the code was amended to require a separation, like you had to physically be in a different tenant space. And for this type of use now, I mean they could have it if you were going to walk outside down the sidewalk and go in a different doorway, um, but of course the selling glasses and things has evolved and so this tends to be a one-stop shop and the arrangement would be what the previous version of the code would have allowed and so the question is just is this okay and while we we love our local merchants I, I, this is an LGR amendment so I just want to put forward uh, this means lens crafters four eyes other similar types of uses would have to be okay as well so just look at it under that guys that's why it's needed though was that adjustment we did a few years ago that's now well-intentioned, but standing in the way of this particular tenant. Could I ask a question? Please. Yes. Thanks. I don't really have a problem with this at all, but I am curious, what, are the parking requirements different than other retail? Because it's sort of used like a walk-in so That's office. That's a very good point. Medical office tends, it does have a much higher, because there's more, um, like four patients, right. I guess, an hour, and staff is different. Um, and so I think we would work um, with the GDA and the applicant in terms of determining whether this type of use was assessed at a retail um, use or whether the, the piece in the back that's got the doctor or the optometrist, which is not the ophthalmologist, we will do some do we will definitely do some definitions to to make sure we know what we're talking about, um, whether that's retail or medical. Um, as part of this LDR, that would anything else that you can think of like that that we should be tackling. If, if sponsorship is successful today, it would be useful. Yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to sponsor this. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Do we need anything else now that we have a sponsor? Yeah, I don't think so. Right. Thank we'll, you very we much. We look forward to seeing your presentation in a more formal manner. Okay, we'll be back. Thank we'll you very slides. much. Have a great day. <laughs> Thank you. Moving on to item number two, summer program considerations for the Cornell Art Museum. Vice Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, I'll go ahead and kick this off briefly. So in response to direction offered during the April 5th regular meeting when other considerations were offered regarding the use of the facility, 
we are in position this evening to address and entertain any specific thoughts and considerations regarding the Cornell Art Museum. A lot of the fact that the facility is in pretty good shape, available for use and activity. So this is your opportunity to provide any thoughts or direction to that effect as succinctly as you possibly can, to also take under consideration that painting, minor cleanup that was remaining necessary for the facility has been initiated and authorized by the Office of the City Manager, so that's well underway, thereby paving opportunities for respective activities as soon as possible. With that, I'd like to offer that opportunity for you to offer your thoughts as well as maintain the remainder of the regular, excuse me, the workshop meeting for ancillary input regarding Old School Square as well. Thank you very much. Before we do that, I wanted to recognize two individuals, our former mayors, Tom Lynch and Jay Alperin. Thank you very much for joining us. It's always good to see you both. Um, who would like to kick it off? I'd like to start sure. by saying, um, is it possible that we can combine the two so that in case there's anyone in the audience who might have something that would combine the two, that we not have them come up to talk about the Cornell Museum in one spot and then to turn around and talk about the other? Sure. Would you like to have the public speak now and yes. then we can have discussion? Yes. I'd, I'd be in favor of that. I was surprised to see this, uh, this third item on the, oh, on the I workshop was told, and it makes sense that it is. I was told that you before. wanted item one. Not true? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is it, would that be okay? That's fine. Um, the specific for regarding the Cornell Art Museum, that's what we discussed for the record. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that we keep our conversation at a certain scope, but I didn't know number three was going to be on the list as far as opening it up for, it seems, public input. I mean, public comment? So, yeah, so we typically don't have public input. Right. Um, I think the direction from the commission was that that's exactly what you wanted. Um, I think just to make sure that there's consensus, um, we don't typically do it, but if there's consensus to open it up for public comment, I think that's, that's fine. Yes. That's fine, and it makes sense that it would be before the discussion, so. Sure, I think there is consensus, so. Thank this you. This time, we're gonna combine two and three. Number three is public input regarding Old School Square Complex. What I'd like to do is invite members of the public who came here today. We will offer you three minutes to offer your thoughts on this item, these items, I should say. And possibly have them all line up just in, so they don't use time getting to the podium. If you could just say your name and address, please, before speaking. Appreciate it. Thank you. My name is Patricia McGuire. Uh, 342 Northeast 1st Avenue in Delray is my Delray address. Whew. As a local artist, Delray citizen, and a Latina minority member of the diverse Old School Square Board, I'm here to make the case that Old School Square Center for the Arts is the best organization to manage the Cornell Museum for three simple reasons. Number one, fiscal responsibility for the taxpayers. Number two, a new business plan. And number three, a proven track record. We all heard you offering the Boca Museum $225,000 for six months of operations. Old School Square has a record of over 32 years of lovingly caring for the historic property, pouring millions of dollars of donated money and thousands of hours of volunteer work into the beautiful building you see today. Old School Square did this, not the city. We have the equipment, the volunteers, donors to bring the building back into operation without costing the city taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars. A new business plan. Commissioner Bolston proposed bringing art to the city by offering local arts, nonprofits, and uh, the public in general charrettes and workshops to get a good idea of what we'd, uh, what we'd like to see. We'd like to build on that. We think it's a great idea. We plan to convert, we, we plan to get the input, but also plan to convert some of the galleries into classrooms and lecture halls and make education an ongoing part of our programming. Artists and educators would hold events, demos, and workshops. We'd also like to con uh, continue exhibiting fine art. We not only want to bring the arts back to Old School Square, we, w we agree with Commissioner Johnson that we also want to see the little old ladies with easels, I'm one of them, on the campus and on the avenue. Um, we, we would also propose having a sculpture garden on the front lawn to help beautify and draw interest. As far as our track record, Old School Square Center for the Arts has extensive contacts with galleries, museums, artists, volunteers, donors, and teachers 
to start providing programming as soon as the restoration of the building is complete, which as I mentioned before, is within our inventory and capability. In the past, our gift shop and spotlight galleries and events supported local artists, nonprofits, and local businesses, which helped our local economy. We also exhibited renowned artists such as Rothko, Dali, Rauschenberg, and prominent figures in the national art world, which put Delray into the map as a destination, art destination. Commissioner Casal uh, mentioned that it was mostly local artists as opposed to the Boca Museum. I dispute that. Our track record put, Delray so put the Delray community solidly behind us. In conclusion, please, we are eager, enthusiastic committee and ready to roll up our sleeves, run the Cornell Museum with you, with the city, to make Delray an arts destination again. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Greetings. Hi. My name is Edward Stinson. Uh, I live at 616 Northwest 45th Drive. This is Michelle Lawrence. I'm his mother. Indeed. We also live at 616 for your address. Um, we are Visual Adjectives, a publishing and production company. Um, in regards to Old School Square, our ultimate goal um, is to work to build tenets of creativity. Um, working and living in Delray, we have come to understand what Old School Square is, where it is, and how many locations are able to utilize it as a central location within Delray. Now, the ultimate goal, we are requesting an opportunity to administer and manage um, the different facilities of Old School Square, not just the Cornell. Um, there are many, many different locations, such as the Pavilion, the Cornell, uh, the Crest Theater, the Field House as well. All of those are options when it comes to Old School Square, and I acknowledge that as well. I also know that some of them are still being renovated as we speak. So all of that is kind of malleable. Now, with that being the case, at Old School Square, we are working to specifically work with some of the nonprofits who are here, such as um, Spady Cultural Heritage Museum, Arts Warehouse, Arts Garage, the Milagro Center, EJS, the DDA, the Plumosa, Plumosa School of the Arts, I used to teach there as well, I love this place, uh, the Historical Society, and the CRA. All of these would be different avenues to not only involve the community, but involve people who have been living here for years to then, as she also said, commence in uh, art and writing as well. And also, Old School Square is the hub of these facilities. So it's at the center of all of these mm -hmm. facilities around us. So we're able to bring them together at one, at one location. Absolutely. As we work in these locations, we also have opportunities for staff and support members with a preference for employees who are residents of Delray Beach. We have lived here all our life. We know how important it is to have people who actually live in the area to work in the area. So we have room for managers, reception, front office coordinators, events coordinators, box office, art instructors, marketing and social media coordinators, web and design coordinators, and volunteers, allowing us to also have a volunteer guild made up of people who we may not be able to pay but who love the art and love to come to this facility with that being the case we also uh, speaking of the Cornell Museum oh thank you time exists uh, <laughs> specifically we will be working on activities events and classes such as art classes such as painting classes gift shops we will have multiple artisans we work at the Renaissance Fair and know the entire staff of the Renaissance Fair there are people who teach how to make outfits there are blacksmithing woodworking uh, embroidery as well. In doing that, we will also have gallery af afternoon shows, weekend shows. We will feature local artists, pop-up galleries, living history events with topical characters, museum exhibits, and historical items on display representing Native American cultures, African uh, Caribbean, Floridian, uh, Floridian uh, items from the World Wars, and train history as well. Again, connecting it to Delray and the many companies that are in Delray. And we're also ready to make a presentation for this these these um, topics absolutely as well and I also have a calendar beginning in June all the way for the rest of the year mm -hmm. for Old School Square thank you very much indeed three minutes is very difficult each of these is like a 30 minute conversation so thank you thank you if you I have the presentations please send it to the board excellent we'll be happy to look at it thank you very much yes ma'am hello hello hi my name is Donna Walsh I'm a Delray resident I, my address is 3120 Northwest 15th Street and I'm one of the founders of Plein Air Palm Beach. We call it PAPB. It's a Florida nonprofit organization whose principal address is in Delray Beach. PAPB has been incorporated since 2014 and has 5013 status since 2015. Our mission is to work with local and visiting Plein Air painters, local art groups, cultural centers, and the public to support and enhance Plein Air painting, education, events and exhibits. 
We have over 1,200 members, some of whom have reached national and international renown in the worldwide plein air movement. But we are probably best known uh, locally as the artists who come to paint the town during the annual Plen Fun Fest, which has taken place at Old School Square, AKA the little old ladies with the easels on the streets. <laughs> as the city of Delray changes, the plein air artists document it with beautiful representational artworks. One example of this, a PAPB's currently showing historic Delray exhibit, which is on display in the Chapel 4 in the Marina District. There are two paintings of Delray A1A that were done in 1980. So this is part of our legacy. Our byline is painting today's landscapes that contribute to tomorrow's history. To that end, PAPB has worked with Old School Square Center for the Arts, Delray Beach Historical Society, Milagro Center, Downtown Development Authority, and numerous businesses in Delray Beach. They love when we paint in front of their store. PAPB has also sought, been sought out by Arnold R. Marshall Loxahatchee Wildlife Refuge, Mounts Botanical Garden, Boca Museum School, Boca Historical Society, the City of Boynton Beach, Armory Arts Center, Lighthouse Arts Center, New Studio of the Arts, and the Cultural Council of Palm Beach but we always have been especially thrilled to work with Old School Square Center for the Arts. Why? For us, there is a beautiful symmetry seeing paintings of today's landscapes, seascapes, and cityscapes, all of Delray, hanging in an iconic historic building like the Cornell Museum. And the staff of Old School Square Center for the Arts were always fantastic, agile, and creative in making that happen. So, PAPB asked the Commission to let us step up and help provide programming for your Summer Program of the Arts at the Cornell Museum. We can bring the artists back to painting on the avenue and fill the walls of the Cornell with beautiful art. It will be all Del Rey, and it will be the Del Rey way. Thank you. Thank you. Hello again. Hi, how are you all? How are you? Uh, Susan Romaine, 518 Andrews Avenue and also 345 North uh, East 3rd Avenue where I have my studio and behind a real estate office. Um, I just want to say, we all want to collaborate. I mean, that's what I'm hearing here. And we all want to speak and give input and our experience uh, to help you all figure out, and the city to figure out how to make Old School Square the best that it can be. Uh, I, I totally believe that Open and public dialogue is very important. Having diverse and new ideas is important. Um, and it sparks the creativity of everyone, as an artist and as a councilman <laughs> and woman. Um, anyway, I, I, I'm very concerned, and I hope that we will be able to have more charrettes, that we will have time to have everyone speak and give their ideas about where what they can offer and, and perhaps help create a new old school square, uh, the collegiate collegiality in old school square. Uh, so I, I'm hoping this workshop will begin setting some time frames, or at least a, an, an authorization to begin setting some time frames over what Ryan Bolstein you called the uh, summer of art in Delray. I think it's a fabulous idea. I think we need it, and I think it will pull our community back together. So I thank you all for listening to us having this workshop, and good luck. <laughs> thank you very much. Anyone else like to speak? See no one. We're going to end the public comment portion of this, and up to the commission now. I, if you don't mind, I would like to jump in. Um, I really appreciate the the positive comments and phone calls that I've received, the messages I received. I was really just trying to explain to everyone why I couldn't be in favor of, um, of leasing out the Cornell to another organization. Um, when I said that Delray Summer for the Arts, I'm going to be completely transparent that I was kind of spitballing. Uh, um, but it seems like it does have you know, some traction. And, um, and in speaking to a lot of the community members that are involved with the arts and some of the leaders that are involved with the arts in our community, um, the conversations really started to remind me of conversations that were had many years ago 
with the Creative City Collaborative. Now, we know the Creative City Collaborative would go on to become the Arts Garage and transform into something else, but there's still a document, which is the Creative City Collaborative document. And what it was meant to do is put in a, you know, kind of an umbrella over all of our arts and cultural organizations, make sure we're kind of, we're all on the same page and rowing in the same direction, which I think is a really positive thing. Um, that cr Creative City Collaborative document hasn't really been utilized a lot, hasn't been referenced a lot. Um, I would like to go back to that and maybe use this as an opportunity. Uh, I think one of the speakers uh, mentioned that Cornell and Old School Square is literally kind of right in the middle not only of our city, but of all of these organizations. And it could be the place where we have a physical um, collaboration, not just this creative city collaboration, which was not in a physical location. But yeah, what if it is the hub? What if Cornell is that? And what if our, our, the summer off season is our time to explore that together? Um, so today is a very short workshop. I was surprised to hear that there was even an opportunity for public comment, which I thought I think is a good, be, you know, a good start. But I just hope that we start the wheels in motion to exploring the opportunity of, of turning Cornell over to our cultural and art community, even if it's for a short term, and see, see what type of magic happens. Great. Ms. Johnson. Thank you very much. Um, hope I can get through this. Um, I thank each and every one of you who came forward. I think the fear was that we were going to be inundated with a lot of uh, not pleasant things, and I'm glad to see that that did not happen. Um, I am, I don't know what the next step is. I did hear a very good idea about the entire campus. I did not want to concentrate on the Cornell. I realized that uh, we have the Field House, which is a beautiful building. We have the Crest Theater once we have reestablished the building and done what we need to do to reopen it to the public. Uh, we have the pavilion, which is a wonderful outdoor um, venue that uh, is not being utilized. Don't know. I think uh, Sam's trying really hard. Sam Mitak is uh, the director of Parts and Recs is trying really hard to utilize it. Uh, three minutes is not a, enough time to talk about one of the uh, presenters. I understand they have something for each one. I'd like to have heard a little bit more about it. So. Uh, I also understand what you were saying, Commissioner Bolson, about a collaborative type thing, but collaborations need a leader. Yes. You need someone who is driving and paying attention to it. Each of those entities that are our nonprofits, um, I don't want to name them now, we know, we know who they are, they have their own um, responsibility. organization yeah. and responsibilities and programming that they need to keep going. Uh, so. I'd like to see us either now, tonight, if we can, if not, um, at a charrette, if necessary, come to some kind of formal presentation by whoever wants to make a formal presentation, understanding that my desire is to have someone run the entire um, campus. And so with that said, I thank you, each and every one of you. I'd love to hear more. Now, obviously, is not the time. A charrette, which I don't think uh, City Manager uh, Moore has been a part of, is something that is very much like our goal setting was, only we spend a lot more time. I don't know, day, evening, we want to give everyone an opportunity. Um, depending on how many people sign up, uh, I'd like to have a full presentation of what each of them have offered, and that's only fair in my opinion. And then should we go in the direction that I'd like to see it go, um, then we can move forward. Thank you. Mrs. Thank you. So, look, I would like to see it active now. I agree with all of you. Um, so I had an interesting conversation, Renee, if you don't mind, may I? Uh, with Renee today. And something that we had discussed is that Gracie has a lot of experience uh, in the museum area. And what I, I think we need to do is start moving. We have to start moving. We've been sitting here waiting for an idea to come, tossing around ideas, rejecting great ideas, if I may. The community deserves better. And so perhaps in for the time being, the CRA is amenable 
to overseeing what's going on over there. And we can start with the museum and then work our way around and see where it goes. But at least we're showing some progress because sitting here scheduling a charrette for maybe next month, you're not even, you'll be away for a bit in the summer, maybe the end of the summer. Then it puts us out months. Then another few months, we're not getting anything done. Let's get our museum open. Let's get things moving and let's start talking about what is practical in the financial sense. What's practical? We were all getting frustrated with the amount of money we were putting into the place and what were we getting back? You know, what, what are the real needs? What are the limitations? Let's get moving. We're not doing anything but talking about it. Yes. Commissioner Cassell, may I go ahead and respond? Certainly. Um, I don't think we gave one of the presenters adequate time to talk about what they are going to offer. They were not a part of an RF or what, whatever, whatever we, I'm sorry? It was an ITN. IT, whatever. It, they were not a part of it. <laughs> None of the presenters uh, came forward and, and gave an idea. Had that been possible at that particular time, we might be further down the road. I'm only saying a charrette because Commissioner Boylston said a charrette but if he doesn't even have time to have one, I well, I'm not speaking for him. I, I'm yeah, saying I'm not speaking for him, Miss Johnson. Okay. I'm merely saying, here we sit having the same conversation. Now, so. I was I wanted the Boca Museum, and I'm say that to everybody. If you see what exhibit they just had, world class. We're a world class city. We have a world class beach. We have world class restaurants. We deserve a world-class cultural arts facility. Now, for all these people have to offer, I totally appreciate, and I think they should all be part of it. Many of these people have been part of Old School Square for a very long time, and I don't see why that can't keep going. But it's got somewhere it's got to start. Something has to give, and we have to start moving. Having a charrette and discussing it, why don't we let Re Renee and the CRA, if they are amenable, start with the museum while we start talking about how we highlight the rest of the assets we have on that campus. It's a very big campus. And right now, if we're going to be looking at this ourselves and we're not contracting somebody, and we, I, frankly, who would we have come in? We need to break it into right. smaller pieces that are palatable and easy to accomplish and start moving because right I, now we're doing nothing. I think we probably did not get a full view of what the uh, Simpsons, Simpsons, Miss. Simpson, Simpson, thank you. <laughs> I have two names for you. Uh, I always, I think Michelle, I think, is how you've been presenting yourself. So we didn't hear what they had. And Renee could meet with them maybe soon and talk to them. I don't I, know. She said she had a June calendar. Well, let's see. <laughs> Mayor Petrolia, would you like to add any comments? Are you with us? I don't think she's with us. Okay, I just wanted to offer the opportunity. Then we I'll have an hour if we'd like to hear more about either what... What, uh, Hold on, let me let me give my two cents. Say, I'm I, sorry you didn't. I'm not speaking. I'm, I have to speak. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please well, forgive me. The, the the first thing that I really like about this is, while we all know this has been a very emotional subject for many, this was very calm, <laughs> and people are here discussing things. We all have the same objective, right. is to open and activate the campus, and it's nice to see. Uh, so many representatives from throughout the city here are joining us because we all know Old School Square mm -hmm. is, is so dear and important to our city, to our residents and our visitors. But um, what you mentioned with Renee and Grace, that was a conversation I had with them at the tennis tournament in February. Okay. Uh, when, I think Renee, you were flipping the coin, I believe, and we were in the little staging area and it was right when everything was going on and the heat of everything and the emotions. And I said, you know, we have so many nonprofits in our city, let's showcase them. Let's do a, a six week exhibit for Spady. Let's do a six week exhibit for this group, that group. Um, but I'm also hearing from this and Charette, which I haven't heard in a long time. I've been yeah. saying the word Charette. We used to have Charettes and figure things out. I, I think this is a good first step. I really, really do. Let's get stakeholders in a room mm -hmm. together, led by a facilitator. And I think we could probably come up with a solution to get this space activated. The museum, I think, would be a quicker activation than the entire right. campus. But we got to remember, we're going in the summer months. So, you know, people are traveling and it's not as many people here. We need to set a goal that by season, 
we're up and running full full time. So totally agree. I, I agree. And while I while I appreciate um, Commissioner Casal's uh, urgency, um, we haven't been talking and talking and talking and talking. Matter of fact, first workshop right here in a year to talk about Old School Square. I've been begging for one all the way since last fall. So, Please, so we haven't been talking and talking. I've been wanting to have conversations about this. Can you imagine if we had this conversation back in the fall winter when this decision was made? So, but we are where we are, right? We can't look backwards. We gotta, we gotta look forward. Um, and I just think it would be criminal not to explore turning over the, the, the Cornell or Old School Square over to our, our arts and cultural community. I know there is, there is interest clearly um, and I think we're a collaborative group that's willing to work together. I do agree, uh, Ms. Johnson, that someone's got to quarterback it, right? right. Some, someone's got to lead it. Um, I haven't spoken with Renee about an idea. I think, I think Grace is phenomenal. They have an activation coming up with Flavor. I think it's F-L-A space V-A-R. I think you say that, Flavor or Flavor. Or, um, that is going to be, I mean, it's just going to be exciting. I mean, I think it's going to blow the roof off Del Rey. I mean, it's really... Um, something really neat. I know you have a lot of connections down in, in Wynwood as well. Um, so hopefully you'll be part of the team. I haven't had a conversation though in regards to them um, being involved in running the space. The warehouse is owned by the CRA. The old School Square isn't owned by the CRA. So I'd like to work through, obviously, uh, through those details and anybody else that wants to be involved or possibly, you know, run point on, that's another um, sports metaphor there, but uh, um, on this, I think that is important. We do need to identify that, but it sounds like we have all the players. So um, whatever staff recommends as far as next step of getting that group together, maybe it's not a public charrette yet in the way we used to do it, where we, we literally we fill the field house and bring in, you know, a, a, a facilitator and all that. Maybe we're not there yet. Maybe that's something we do for the old school square campus as a whole, but maybe something we do a lot quicker is bring together the stakeholders who we know who they are in the community for our arts and culture um you know arena and get them in a room as quick as possible to talk about some some thoughts mr johnson yes thank you very much um someone said they had a calendar that starts in june for the entire campus how can we overlook knowing what that is i mean it's only another couple of weeks but they're already ready to hit the deck running i mean is it we've got what 45 minutes at least? Did I hear the mayor? Was she trying to no, say something? I think there were. Okay. Back uh, I, do we have time I, to I listen am, to what? I would be more than more than happy if, if they, you know, sent that presentation, be requested formally to be on like a, a future, you know, agenda. They sound like they're prepared to do so. I don't know if it's. Well, we don't have. And I'm kind of looking at our, you know, city attorney, city manager, whether it's appropriate to just fire up some presentation that was mentioned during public comments. No. Yeah. Mr. Moore? No. Mr. Moore, do you have something to say? I'm okay. I'm just listening. Okay. I'm about to respond, so, but please continue. Here's what I'd like to do. Re I've invited Renee. I actually spoke to her a week ago. <gasps> Renee and Grace, could you come up by chance? And it sounds like you've had conversations with at least a couple of us. <laughs> Since you spoke to us, have you had any thoughts or other conversations you can share with us in the public? Hi, everyone. Hi. Renee Jadison. Grace I'm Grace Skidanek. Hello, everyone. So, yes. Well, when we spoke at the Tennis Center, it was kind of like a side conversation, uh -huh. just Absolutely. like, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it's like, on commission agenda. But I mean, we uh -huh. have the capability. Grace is running the arts warehouse. It's an arts facility. That's why I'm like, well, if there needs assistance, we can pitch in, if that's the case. Mm -hmm. um, it takes time to get exhibits going, though, so it won't be like an overnight thing. But I do like the idea of getting everyone together, and you do need someone to drive that. You know, and that's, I hate to volunteer Grace, but if we need, if there's other people in the city, maybe a team of people can work together, but we at least have that direct curation person on staff is kind of what the point was. Right. So. Maybe Grace, you can share some of your experience because I know you do a great job for us at the Arts Thank Warehouse. Thank you, yes. Um, I've been at the Arts Warehouse for four and a half years now, um, but previous to that, I was also the director of programming at a space in Pompano Beach, very similar to Arts Warehouse, art studios, um, it was run by the CRA as well. Um, so I handle a lot of the curating at Arts Warehouse. If you've been there, we have three gallery spaces, but I also welcome and love to work with other curators in collaboration. Um, as far as what we were kind of just chit-chatting about that time, um, you know, the Cornell has one, two, three, four galleries, I believe. And 
I think I had said something like, you know, maybe each one is kind of taken over in a pop-up sense by different cultural organizations in the city for a temporary time. That could be an option. Um, you know, because it's a huge building, it might be overwhelming for just one organization to kind of take it over for a short time. So I thought maybe splitting it. So that was just one, one idea we were kind of, you know, chit-chatting about. But I do agree that having one person or an organization that can kind of organize what that schedule looks like, the logistics of it all, and then the other cultural organizations that would be perhaps showing work or doing something else within those spaces could, you know, if they want to, uh, participate. So I think that would be, I think there definitely should be a conversation with, with whoever else would want to be involved, what, for sure. What, what else would you see there? Because most of the cultural organizations feature their own displays in their own places and they want people to come because when people come to their place and they they're likely to donate right mm -hmm. whereas if we go to the cornell and we see things from spady we might not donate i went to spady and i came the next day with a small check because you see what they're doing you see their overhead you see their cost you see the benefit i think if we pull our nonprofits into our into our space, and that is a lovely space, they may not benefit long term. Um, but what other things, because here's, this is, you, what you're talking about is a very short term thing. Mm -hmm. I'm talking long term. What are we doing with this campus, this museum for the long term? And, it, you know, that's what I think we need to be talking about. Mm -hmm. Short term putting in displays, the topic is summer program considerations for. I know, but I think we need to be talking more broadly beyond just summer. Today? I don't have a problem. Well, we've got this workshop goes till four o'clock. And I think basically that what you're seeking, and I agree with you. Thank you. Would be more of like a charrette thing to get all members of the public and our residents involved in that. Yeah. Um, I do see Ms. Johnson with her hand on the button, so she's got something. Yeah, but I think we all agree. <laughs> Somebody needs to head this up and look. This, this place, and, and this is no disrespect, but we don't want it underutilized. It is the, it's the main asset of our city. We, we you know, are known for our arts and culture. So we need to find right person or people to be bringing to life the entire facility. No question. That's what, I, to me, is Charette's for. Ms. Johnson? Well, I thought one of the presenters did that. I'm, I'm like, out. can they? Do they want to talk about their? Um, I'd love to have them come up and use some Ms. additional Johnson, time. Ms. Johnson, I'm totally fine with them coming up because right. we're scheduled till four. Perfect. Right. So, say, and may I respond to a couple of things Commissioner Cassell has said? I guarantee you, Commissioner, that we're going to have first rate. I don't know. I'm not an artist. I'm not an art connoisseur or critic. Um, one man's art. Number one might be another man's, this is not Del Rey. So I, I'd just like to push I, back on that. And I thank you for saying that we need a coordinator. Right. This one picking apart the campus is not going to do what we want it to do. I would like to see all four places active at one time. There is nothing wrong with that. We could have a wedding over at the field house. We could have a concert at the pavilion or a movie of old time movies, genres. Um, there could be an art show somewhere over at the Cornell or at the Cornell and whatever's happening with our renovated um, Crest Theater. So, but we need someone who's amenable to doing all of that. Can I, can and I, I only ask? have one, I only think one group person stepped up to say that. I'm Ms. John? Can I just, can I? Okay. Wait, hold on guys, okay. hold on. So I think, I, think, I think we need to stay on track. Mm -hmm. Remember, this is a workshop, this is not a charrette. So, and a charrette, yes, members of the public could come up and give presentations. Typically, we don't allow public comment, and technically, public comment is closed, right? Because you started your commission discussion. Mm -hmm. So, I, 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 I think we need to be mindful that we kind of change the rules a little bit to allow the public comment, which is based on your feedback and your absolute right to do. However, allowing people to come back up, that means everyone else should have that same opportunity, and we need to be fair. So, I think we need to... Remember what our agenda was. There's two separate discussions. The first discussion is what we're going to do in the short term, which is, you know, pursuant to Commissioner Boylston's um, discussion at our last meeting that, you know, the summer of Delray and how we want to be able to manage that. The second discussion is a more long-term discussion, which is 
I think, going to be subject to the charrette. And, I, and we're not going to handle that today. That was just to give the members of the public an opportunity to come up, throw out their ideas, express their interest, and then at a future date, I think it's more appropriate for them to come make their presentations and show that show their interest. But I think for today, I think what our goal is is to get the direction on the on the Cornell. Mm -hmm. um, we can't even have this discussion on the Crest Theater. Let, let's be honest, right? We're we're nowhere near that discussion. And then moving forward, if you give us direction on a charrette then I think the manager will be better poised to schedule that and allow the public to come forward and, and give us their pitches, which obviously you would most likely be present at that, at that meeting. I, I, would like to see, I would like to see us give staff direction today in regards to getting something in motion for Cornell. That would be the short term, right? Um, and whether that's reaching out and getting a group discussion with our culture or en engaging with the, the CRA in regards to their offer, um, that would be short term. That would be for the summer. And while that's and while that's happening, we can have public conversations and presentations from anyone interested in the long term, which would be running the entire campus. Right now, it's the Cornell's ready to go. Like it's it's ready to go, and we need to get that fired up. It's right on Atlantic Crest is not, and the Pavilion and Fieldhouse are being taken care of right now, right? That's not long term, but short term, we're doing public concerts and movies at, at the pavilion. And if you want to rent out the field house for any weddings or party, that is available right right now. And then over but for long term, we can look for someone else to do that. But short term summers and it's what is it? It's mid May. <laughs> it's in two you know it's in two weeks. You know, we really kinda need to move and I think we have the partners that could fill that gap for the summer. Okay. One step enough. Are, are they volunteering? Uh, so let's talk about. To, we're talking short term. She Mr. seems Moore? to have a look on her face that she's not. Well, Mr. Moore no, has something to add. Hold on one moment, okay. Mr. Moore. Yes, and so a few comments as well as a potential recommendation or two. So, again, both items are based on direction from the April visits. And again, I appreciate City Attorney Lynn Jellen for assisting that clarification because that is exactly right. Short term focus, long term, because as I stated in the introductory comments. The Conair Art Museum, the facility itself is ready to go. And I think you've all acknowledged that. I've spoken to you, several of you all about that in preparation for today. So I've made authorizations for painting and, and other arrangements to be able to get that up and running. So we're squared away in that regard. So given some expressions of interest from the artistic community in Delray Beach, some of you have had an experience, as have I, and that would be an opportunity. So if leadership from the Derry Beach Community Redevelopment Agency were amenable, I'll be more than happy to make arrangements in the next couple of weeks or so to collectively con visit along with other department directors so that we can offer direction and opportunities to that effect, to also invite members of the artistic community who would have an interest in offering a presence at the Cornell Art Museum in the coming weeks, number one. Number two, I'd like to ask everybody to please be mindful relative to the calendar at the Old School Square Complex because, as you all recall, the Department of Parks and Recreation has been doing a yeoman's job of providing concerts, providing movies, and other events to keep activities in Malou underway at the complex. So that's actually in position until the month of June. Typically, July, August, September, not much activity happening in that regard. Bottom line, there is the opportunity for the Cornell Art Museum as a facility. So. With consensus, I will be more than happy if it's okay with you, Ms. Jada Singh, and you've shaken your head yes, that we can get together in the next couple of weeks Wait. to create some opportunity in the short term, followed by direction for some long-term process to the point that many of you all are raising here at the dais. Okay. I'm more than happy to offer direction as outlined. Ms. Cassell? Thank you. Um, just because I just, I'm trying to think about this. So you're talking only a couple of weeks with local nonprofit artwork in side and i'm just wondering if it makes good sense i mean we so it you're be, running it it would be activated in a couple weeks no no but it's summer and you're weeks. saying there's not a lot of people there so what's going to be what are what's the cost to get this up going get the artwork in and then what's the benefit if all these nonprofits are displaying i mean if if you talk about historic are they going to take one of their displays you're really and pull it over. You're really minimizing our arts and culture. Industry. No, 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 I'm not. I'm taking, I'm con, you no, are. I'm not. You are. Thank you. That's nice. You Thank you. They have an incredible amount of connections. It's not that. I'm trying amount. to maximize no, our, I was speaking, it's my speaking time, if I may. 
I'm not minimizing. I'm asking responsible questions because if it's going to take a few weeks just to get it prepared and then we have to man it every day, are we charging people to come in? How are, we don't even have any, like, does, is there a logistics plan? This was a conversation and now we're moving into a plan. And I think before I'm amenable to voting, I need it properly outlined. No I'm voting. not saying I'm opposed to it. I'm saying I don't have a sense of what it's going to cost. Are we opening it from 9 to 5 every day, Monday through Friday? Well, I think these are questions that Mr. Moore and, and Ms. Jadison would have to coordinate and figure out. Um, but there's been a proposal for a uh, short-term option to have the CRA and our, our great leaders there to open and allow some of our nonprofits into the Cornell Art Museum. And Mr. Moore is seeking consensus for that, just for the short term. Short term. And if I may, ladies and gentlemen, all those logistics and observations, or not so much observations, but details, I'll offer you all an update to that effect, working collaboratively. And I'm very comfortable to do that. So Deputy Vice Mayor Casal is absolutely correct about the logistics and the details in that regard. And before we formally proceed, as noted, I will advise the city commission accordingly. So I'm simply suggesting that we convene in the next couple of weeks, right. two weeks from today, May 31st, so that we can build that profile, pro forma, if you will, bring it, back to, us bring it to you all, update you all accordingly. Perfect. And on another reason I'm comfortable in this regard, ladies and gentlemen, because Cornell Art Museum, we're responsible for the operations and utilities and all the other expenses that right. are underway no matter what. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I'm fairly confident that any, any residual financial outcomes would be minimal. I'm, I'm pretty mm -hmm. good in terms of data analytics and numbers and so forth. And so we'll add that to the mix as well. But the fact that the Community Redevelopment Agency administrative leadership is in position to, to graciously and magnanimously offer their assistance in that regard that makes this a very feasible outcome. So I would love to have the opportunity to work with everybody involved. We'll get together, I would, I'm thinking May 31st, right after Memorial Day, that's only two weeks from now. We get together, create the environment logistics. I can update you all as early as one of the two meetings in June in terms of where we are, and we would go from there, and hopefully we would create an opportunity to extend invitations, and off we go. For the Cornell Art Museum, specifically because of the expenses in which we're incurring, number one, Number two, the fact that the facility is usable. Mm -hmm. Because again, I've authorized administratively per my authority, the painting details and cleaning up to make it nice and tidy as well as it can be. So that's fairly, it's not complicated mm -hmm. to proceed in that regard. Immediately following this structure, we will then coordinate arrangements for a more public engagement for long-term considerations to entertain specific proposals that may become available. Mm -hmm. So that would be what I- I'm sorry, ma'am. Do you have a date? So, not specifically, but within a time frame. Are you saying you'll have whatever get together will be? As far as the large June, public you engagement, said May the 31st. So, do you have a date? Let me clarify May 31st because I'm pretty specific about May 31st. The way my little mind works in terms of data analytics, numbers, and dates. So, May 31st, Grace, Renee, myself, other department directors will convene to start the process of outlining details and considerations with respect to some of the logistics and concerns that Deputy Vice Mayor Casal has outlined, number one. Number two, we will then begin the process soon thereafter, the coming days, whatever the case may be, to, to possibly extend invitations for artists who may have an interest in coming to the facility within the coming weeks, um, a lot of summer. What I've learned from engaging with external museum experts, artists, et cetera, is that although summer, July, June, July, August, into September timeframe is a little less active, people still like to come out and visit. It won't be as robust as it is in the fall and the spring timeframe or the winter months, et cetera, but there's still some element of activity. And that's okay, ladies and gentlemen, because the city of Delray Beach is footing the bill in terms of the utilities and operational expenses anyway. So, we take care of those expenses without any activity at all, or we begin an opportunity to create some mm -hmm. malu, so to speak. Okay, so, so thank you. So for short term. Finished. And He's then I want, finished. that's the short term. Yeah. Hold so, on one second, hold on. Is there a consensus to go forward with this short term proposal? I'd just like to offer an apology to Renee and staff, because this is something we've thrown on you without any kind of ask 
and I hate it that... Um, well, I did ask. Well, no. Adam I, did look, well, I did ask. Yeah, Commissioner Frankel actually did ask. He asked me to come. So. What we're considering <laughs> yeah. is them having a discussion and then coming uh, back to us with all the logistics for us to... Uh, cons to for the museum. museum. So we're not making right. a determination right too. now. We're just yeah. having him have the discussion, acquire the information, and but then... they're going to feel that they're Jettison, under the gun. Hold on, Ms. Jettison, please. Um, visual adjectives is actually one of our tenants in the arts warehouse. So we, you know, have a relationship with them. They've shown in the gallery too. So, you know, obviously they would be part of the discussion as they're our tenant currently. So just if that, you know. I just know Grace is really overworked as Grace it is. is and I, 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 hate, no. I hate that kind of a thing. Grace but has a great brain. That's, that's just the way it is. That's the way life is. And when you, you're an agency under a city, so to speak, you're not totally independent. But we Ms. have Johnson, the she's not, she's not going to be alone. This oh is, no no no! I know. But no. No. Collaboration. They're they're the they're going to be the driving force. Like the every everyone yeah. has to have a right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every right operation has to have someone in charge, and that's all I'm saying. For short we, term. We've dumped something on them, so I was just apologizing. Yeah. Just to clarify, so you know we have the curation services. We've done our you know different um, exhibitions and different jury things. So we have that experience and rubrics already. If we need to do a framework for it, so that's kind of what we're lending is that information not the whole shebang but just <laughs> the curation sure you don't want to volunteer for the whole shebang no 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 <laughs> not the whole thing but <clears throat> that part of it yes so if, if i may ladies and gentlemen in addition if i'm able to proceed as i've outlined for may 31st we'll convene city hall and all that or a suitable location i anticipate being able to report back to the city commission via your june 14th meeting that's two weeks after that engagement in terms of what the initial log case, logistics will be, as well as the connecting the dots with respect to existing curation services and ancillary support that may be required at that point in time, above and beyond what it is we're already doing. So I'm on that linear thought process, if you will. I'm more than happy to proceed accordingly and go from there. After that exercise, we would then begin thoughts and considerations relative to the, to the long-term, more comprehensive endeavor. Well, let's so, talk about that next. So, short term, are we good with this? Yes. Is there, you have consensus, Shirley? Yes. Okay, so short term, we're good. You have consensus. Thank you. Very let's well. Let's talk about long term. So long term, I heard interesting comments about the CCC. I heard collaborations. I heard charrettes. I heard a lot of Cs. Um, I think we should come up with a date. Um, I know, Mr. Boylston, you're traveling a bit. Do not hold this up for me. What, what, yeah. you're, you're gone in June or, or July? I'm gone, I'm gone for most of the month of July, but okay. please do so, not hold this up for me. There's no reason for this. Would there be consent? And I'm going to be absent the month, the end of July, 1st of August. So, so perhaps. I, I can tune in. Okay, so perhaps in June, mm -hmm. maybe have a, a date that we could have a citywide uh, charrette to discuss some of the proposals that were made today. If some of the, the people with proposals have them and like to share them with the commission, our emails are all online. I'm sure we would all like to see it. But would there be consensus for the long-term plans of Old School Square Campus to have a charrette in Absolutely. the month of June? Absolutely. Open yes. up to the public. What's their, what's their vision? Okay. You have consensus for that? Is there any other? Oh, go ahead. Just before we agree on a date, we should uh, have Mr. Moore just throw out a number of dates. I don't know what. I think we amended our schedule so we had a good chunk off. I just don't remember Probably exactly when it is. It's going to a venue. It's got to be big. It's got to be not booked. I can't imagine you're just going to be able to come and up. And that's why I said the month of June. Month I don't June. know if we, do we need a date certain today? or we should if we can come to one so I, we oh, don't we flounder. and get a date and, certain. You'll, you can I, just I, I think the date should be circulated only because there are other logistics with where he's going to hold it and things like that. I, I do want to seek direction, though. You're, I'm assuming this is going to be later in the evening, not at 2 o'clock or 4 o'clock. Yes. I think you're thinking maybe 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Yeah. 6 o'clock in June. Maybe a Wednesday night. Maybe. And I have a thought to that effect, if I may. I'm sorry, Mr. Moore? I do have a thought as far as a date and time and a location consideration. Okay. What date it are you looking at? might be suitable. So I'm actually thinking people like Wednesday, middle of the week, 6 o'clock. I'm guessing. And with everybody, so the city commission meeting schedule is currently June 7th Can and June 14th. Can you just 14th. circulate that? Because I don't have my schedule in front of me. I do paper, and Wednesdays are typically not good for me, actually. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, um, but typically uh, Thursdays and Mondays are good. But can you just circulate something, I, an email? Mr. Moore, go ahead, please. I don't want to interrupt you. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Well, in light of being considerate of all, 
So your city commission meeting calendar for the month of June are June 7th and June 14th. Correct. June 14th, we'll offer the update in terms of the short-term piece. So a number of people will be away beginning the following, the week of the last week of June and into July a little bit, July calendar, July 12th, July 19th. I'm simply articulating dates of which you already have committed meetings. And may so, I ask, I'm sorry to interrupt, on the 9th of June, we have from four, I'm sorry, two to four CRA budget workshop and for the CRA regular meeting. Yes, so we might want to add that. Yes, ma'am. Good call. So based on my understanding, as well as the input having just been provided, we can perhaps facilitate a charrette exercise Thursday, June 23rd at the Cornell Art Museum. No. Would that have you been there? What do you mean? Charette at the, yeah, at no the Cornell? Museum. The Cornell Art Museum? You can't have a charrette there. Okay, well. What do you consider a charrette, sir? I'm sorry, ma'am? What do you consider a charrette? I understand. A gathering where people can, can it's probably engage in public. They've always debate. been held at the field house. The field house is the other and, thought. And obviously, you'd have to check the calendar, make sure someone's not getting you know, <laughs> married there. Right. Um, I don't think they're getting married. Or, or, or any other type of community event. So, again, I think. Uh, Vice Mayor um, Frankel putting forward June, go look at June and see if the space is available and, uh, and make sure that like key partners, whether I can make it or not as a singular commissioner is not important. This is a public charrette. Um, but I do think there's some key partners that obviously we are, we're going to want there, especially from your staff. Um, so I think that's the way to move forward. So Fieldhouse would even be appropriate. Fieldhouse would be good. Fieldhouse would be appropriate Thursday evening, June 23rd. Again, I, I think it's dangerous to just lock in a date right here without talking to anyone or looking at any schedules or calendars or, you know, I, I would, but it's your call. Well, that's where I am and okay. that would be my suggestion. Okay. Great. Okay. Ms. Johnson, do you have availability that night? I, I do as long as it's after 3.30. Well, I think it's going to be 6 o'clock. Okay. 6 p.m. Right after your happy hour. <laughs> I'm going to continue it there. I'm I'll start there and end it there. So if I may, ladies and gentlemen, so given my previous backgrounds and experiences with Shivrest and other communities, a couple hours is typically suitable for something like this. And again, this would be my first specific Shivrest experience in Delray Beach. No, longer than that. We, our Shivrest don't, they're not workshops. I was going to say, I've been to Shivrest, they've been all day, I, you know. We, we just typically, I, I, th I would anticipate there's going to be members of the public coming out in droves. Okay. I, so, I, I hope so. Go ahead, Ms. Cassell. Interject for a moment. One of the concerns I have is a lot of people leave for the whole summer, and you'll be missing a whole. Um, no, there there are a lot of people that leave for the summer. So we, if we really want to get a lot of input, we should do it like. And I encourage them to email us, call us, do whatever they like. We, we need to do something. Yeah, we got we've been kicking like this can uh, down too long. And I think it should be sometime in June, sooner better than later. And I think once a plan is put in, a plan is formulated, we'll probably present that, you know, back to the community and have input then too, so. Or wait, will we do like a could, and if we people call are interested, in or video mail-in option? I don't know how we're going to do that with at the field house. And if people are interested, they can always email us whatever options they have. and. Maybe we could have the city present it somehow. Right, one of the them. staff. Okay. Um, do it. Say, um, Shirley Johnson's entertainment hour, um, happy hour every day, all day, kind of thing. Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so tentatively, June twenty third at six p.m. Yes, sir. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. And quite frankly, I am in communication with Director of Parks and Recreation Sam Mitot, who will work with the Office of the City Manager to facilitate arrangements to this effect for that date and time. We'll confirm and finalize as noted in the next few days. Otherwise, just to summarize both items briefly before we wrap up, May 31st, Renee, myself, other members of the CRA and City of Delray Beach team regarding the short-term considerations for Cornell Museum. We update you June 14th in terms of the overall scope and structure in terms of how we'll facilitate short-term outcomes, followed by June 23rd, field house engagement concerning long-term, more comprehensive opportunities and proposal review and considerations, which will result in more specific considerations thereafter. 
Can you just allow me till I get home tonight to finalize that date? And I think yes, we should verify that with the mayor as well, since she's not here. Of course we will. We'll do what we can with all, of course. We'll, we'll work on a consensus. That's Perfect. tentative. Thank you. Great. Is yes, there any other uh, items that we need to discuss before we end this meeting? Ms. Johnson? No, none at all. Thank you very much. Can we, we uh, sorry, we can't. We, no, we, did, we did public comments already, so I, I we're, we're going to close this portion, and we can, you can talk to us afterwards, okay? I, I meeting adjourned.